guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're attempting to build our temporary power pole and I have all my electrical components uh, minus the PVC. So I'm going to walk you through uh, what I think uh, will get the job done for the temporary power. Again, I am not an electrician. I am not a licensed contractor. I am purely just an owner that's trying to build his own home. So uh, take it for what it's worth. In the end, this will have to be inspected and hopefully we can get a pass on our first go. So stay with me and I'll walk you through this. All right, so the good news is we're making progress. The bad news is the struggle is real. Uh, Things just aren't going together the way I like, and I'm a little bit OCD with things. So, uh, yeah, it's just driving me a little bonkers. But uh, here, I'll show you what we got so far, what I'm running into. Okay, so this is the weather tight box that I have for our plug. So, I'm going to have two plugs on it, GFI protected, um, and it's going to have a cover on the box so that it's weatherproof, these plugs go in here. And this is connected into my breaker box. It's a 100 amp square D breaker box, and I'm trying to get the connections weather tight. So if you can see this, there's just a touch of an offset there. See, it doesn't line up perfect, so I need an offset piece to go in between these two and it's becoming hard to find. So um, so that's one piece I gotta run back to the store. It'll only be my third trip. Not a big deal. Um, let's see. Then the wires run up in here. I'm gonna have two separate circuits, 20 amps a piece uh, to run our power tools. So this is a weather tight breaker box. And then this box, show you the top of it here. The top of this is here, and that's going to go into my meter base, which is right here. So I got to do a knockout here, and here's one of those offset pieces. So that's, that's I need a one inch to get my plugs. So the back is flat to sit on my post. So this will be knocked out and it will set right on top of that. Which will be nice. And my meter base. Let me show you. The top of that. So the meter base here is the same deal. It got a fitting there and that goes into my conduit up to the top of the pole which then the wires will come out here and that's my weather head on the top and that will connect that's where Duke Energy will connect into my wires so a little bit of a struggle here I got to run back up and get some wire nuts uh, or some nuts to um, connect these to hold them onto the box because I had originally Again, I'm jack of all trades, master of none. I thought this was gonna be enough, but that is just an insulating deal to protect the wire on the top. So I need to get a metal ring to thread down to hold it onto the box. So I need to do that. And um, then I'm getting pretty close to being able to cut my PVC and, and run it. So here, I'll lay it out and show you what it's gonna look like. So in a nutshell, plugs run up into my breaker box, run up into my meter base, and the conduit will come out the top with officially the rain head on the top. So that's what it'll kind of look like, roughly. A uh, little bit of a struggle to get it weather tight, and I haven't even got to the wiring portion yet, so this ought to be fun. 
So here we go, trip number three uptown to get more supplies. Oh, well, it's gonna be another scorcher. So we're gonna try to be efficient at this. Uh, there's where I wanna put my pole. Uh, we're all set up to go get lumber. Pole is gonna be uh, 80 feet from, about 85 feet there from uh, the stake that Duke Energy set. So that's where my power pole with the transformer is gonna go. It's gonna come across the road and uh, drop it down here. And then we're gonna run the line over to the temporary power pole for construction power which is about 25 to 30 feet in front of my house, the front of the house, which will be good. So we can run a 50 foot extension cord over to run tools. And I'm about 50 feet from the corner of the garage. So let's see, there's the corner of the house, corner of the garage there. So we should be in pretty good shape. Let's hope that the heat doesn't get to us today and we can get this pole put up. All right, it's day three of temporary power install. And yesterday we were able to get the pole set. Spent most of the morning kind of running around and getting lumber and parts and uh, getting some equipment to get the hole dug and get the pole set. So let me show you what we got so far. All right, so here's our pole. And the middle of the meter box is supposed to be six feet up and we, uh, attached everything to the post before we set the post obviously because the top is uh, 16 feet in the air so it didn't really have a way to to work on it uh, once it was up so we were not able to get the line right here on the bottom of the post is actually 48 inches which is what I wanted to get which is what we based the height off of and as you can see we didn't quite get uh, down 48 inches we're about four inches short so when we set the pole and pushed it into the hole, I think we knocked some dirt back in um, and that didn't allow us to get all the way down. So code requires that the meter base be within four to six feet of uh, ground level. So what I'm going to do today is take my tractor and backfill some dirt around this to bring it up to that line so that when they measure down, I'm within the six foot tolerance. And uh, that should get us uh, through that part of the inspection. Uh, the other thing I need to do, which I have not done yet, is underneath here I need to uh, knock out. You probably can't see that with the shadow. We're going to hit this, uh, poke a hole here through the knockout, and I have to run my ground down, uh, ground wire down, and I got to get, uh, get my rod put in, my copper rod put in the ground, and that's going to be today's project along with the leg bracing. So we're gonna have bracing. Two legs come out to the side here to help hold the pole. Since it's the wire is gonna be coming and pulling the top of the pole that way, uh, we need to have some additional bracing per Duke Energy requirements. So we're gonna get those put on today. Hopefully it'll be a short day. I'm hoping to be done by noon and uh, before the weather moves in. So we'll see how it works out and we'll give you guys an update at the end. Here we go, finished product, day three of this. So we ended up putting our braces in, which is required if you're gonna be over 80 feet, it takes two braces. So just a treated two by four and that's a one by six treated. And that is going to provide some stability when the wire is pulling towards that post there when they set it. So also got my ground rod in. So just like we talked about, kind of hard to see, but knocked a hole in, dropped my wire down and got my rod into the ground eight feet. So we are now within code two. I, I uh, kind of fudged it a little bit, but hey, gotta do what you gotta do, right? So just dump some dirt around here and that gets us six feet, just under six feet to the meter base, which is within code. So we are, we are officially done. And Monday we'll get the inspection called in and fingers crossed that that goes well. So thanks for watching guys.
Uh, please like and subscribe. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Uh, I'm going to put a couple of links to some documents that I used uh, to get this thing built. Duke Energy has a document, and uh, I found another one online that was really helpful to make this to code. So uh, look for those if you plan on doing this yourself. It's easy to do. I'm going to say I have about 700 bucks in this whole deal. Uh, lumber and uh, electrical components included. So uh, for about 700 bucks, you can get yourself a temporary power pole. And once we get the inspection done, I'll let you guys know how that comes out. So like the doofus I am, I realized after editing the videos that I did not have any videos showing the wiring that I did for the temporary power pole. Everything that I filmed that had to do with the wiring was in portrait mode. So uh, that will be in the next video after we get the inspection done. I'll show you what I did wiring. But before we do that and before I leave you go, I wanted to go over my build binder that I have and show you where I got the information uh, from Duke Energy to build this power pole to spec. All right, so my build binder here in one of these tabs, I have Builder and Contractor's Guide for Electric Service from Duke Energy. So in this document, which I will link in the description below, um, they have the information on how they would like you to build your temporary service pole. And this is it right here. So as you've seen from the video, mine looks very similar to this with the exception of I have two legs or two braces that come out uh, to support it because I am over uh, 16 feet high. So it requires two braces, uh, very similar to what they show here. So you have your two leg braces and then the wire coming in from the transformer over to the uh, weather head on my pole. So. That's what I did. Um, this kind of lays all the details out. Again, I'll link this so you can see it. And this is the chart where it shows um, span distance and the minimum attachment height above ground for Duke service cable and your minimum timber or pole equivalent size. So they specify exactly what you need to have. Um, and for me, I fell in this bottom category. Since we're not building over a road, it's just gonna be pedestrians only uh, underneath the line. And I was 85 feet, so I'm within the 80 to 100 foot max. So my minimum attachment height is 16 feet. Minimum timber size was a six by six. So that dictated exactly how I needed to, uh, how high I needed to build my pole plus um, the size of timber. So um, then under the bottom here at the bottom, there's another table and it shows um, pole minimum burial depth. Um, I am braced, and it's good soil around there. It's the clay, and I used stone, well-tamped, um, and compacted backfill. So um, it's only required to go two feet deep. I tried to get four feet in there, um, and uh, that'll just give us a little extra insurance on that. But this is what I use to build my pole, and again, I'll show you the um, wiring for it. Uh, once I get back out to the lot and we uh, either before the inspection or after the inspection, probably after I'll, I'll uh, since we'll have things opened up anyways, I'll, I'll kind of show you guys uh, what I did as far as the wiring inside. So now I'll leave you go. And until next time, we'll see what happens uh, with the inspection. And uh, hey, if you think my poll is going to pass inspection, give me a thumbs up. If you have doubts as to whether my poll will pass inspection, why don't you give me a thumbs down? And we'll see, uh, see how many we get on each side of the fence there, and we'll see if we can uh, pass inspection. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.